Here at Central Park Zoo, we love our animal friends. This red panda's name is Sandra. We got bears and lemurs too. Our friendly puffin's name is Justin, and he likes to eat and poop. Oh my God, Justin, back up! You're getting too close to the camera. It's getting blurred. Justin, Justin, what the? F New York City's Central Park. Probably the most famous park on the entire planet, Central Park is a tourist destination all by itself. Its 843 acres are situated squarely in the middle of Manhattan and it runs between 59th Street and 110th Street. There's carriage rides and statues and musicians and statues and food and statues and turtles. If you're lucky enough to have a day in New York City dedicated to Central Park, it can start to feel overwhelming when you look at all the options for activities that you have in front of you. To give you a hand, I put together the the top 10 ways to spend one day in Central Park. Make sure you stay to the end to get the inside scoop on why you might want to avoid one of the most popular areas of Central Park. Central Park the Zoo. The Central Park Zoo has been open since 1864 and is small but mighty. A ticket for an adult is $20 and for a child is $15. However, if you are a group of animal lovers, you can easily spend several hours here. I was lucky to enter at 11.15 and they do a sea lion feeding every day at 11.30. They jump, they wave, they eat. The zoo holds feedings for both sea lions and penguins daily, so make sure you stick around for one or both of those if you have the time. They have red pandas, which are one of my favorite animals. They have grizzly bears, which are one of my favorite animals. And they have puffins. <laughs> carousel. Why is this carousel the greatest thing? Look, I don't care how old you are. Riding around in circles to music on hand-carved horses is fun. And if you do have kids at only $3.50 per ride, this is an absolute steal for New York City. It was built way back in 1908 on Coney Island before being moved to Central Park in 1951. It is closed during the winter, so keep that in mind if you're making a New York City trip over the holidays. Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields for... <laughs> Strawberry Fields is really simple, but really beautiful. It's at 72nd Street on the west side of Central Park, right across from the Dakota, which is where John Lennon lived with Yoko Ono and where he was assassinated in 1980. It consists of a small garden and a visual tribute to Lennon's life and legacy, which was especially based around peace and understanding. There's souvenirs available for purchase if that's something you're into, and oftentimes you'll find a busker performing the songs of John Lennon and the Beatles to set the atmosphere. Low Bridge. Are you in love? You probably are. You and your partner probably probably hold hands and kiss and eat pasta. You're not special. <laughs> Get it together! Well, look no further. I have the most picturesque and romantic spot you will find in all of New York City. It's Bow Bridge. And if you've never been in person, you have absolutely seen it in movies and TV. It's gorgeous no matter what time of year you arrive. If you come in the spring, you'll see the cherry blossoms nearby on Cherry Hill. On summer weekends, you can rent a boat or marvel at the newlyweds. And of course, the fall foliage is iconic. Smooch away. <laughs> Belvedere Castle. You want to get high? <laughs> like elevation. It sits on Vista Rock, which is the highest point in all of Central Park. So as you might imagine, the views from up there are amazing, especially if you're able to go all the way up to the top of the castle. Unfortunately, I visited on a Tuesday and quickly learned that the castle is not open to the public on Mondays or Tuesday. Delacourt Theater. To be or not to be, that is the question. It's home of the free Shakespeare in the Park series that the public theater puts on every summer from early June to early September, and if you can manage to get a ticket, it really is one of the most remarkable things you can do in all of New York City. There's a few ways you can do that. You can line up at the theater at 6 a.m., tickets start to be given out at noon, or you can enter a lottery by waiting at the theater or virtually on your phone. Ophelia! Get off the stage! Alice in Wonderland a statue. Wee. I'm not a wee. There are plenty of statues in Central Park that are worth visiting, but the one that gets a special mention here is the Alice in Wonderland statue. It was dedicated back in 19. 59 with the intention of being interactive, which means yes, you can climb. That's what makes it better than the other statue. I'm looking at you, Balta. It can get pretty busy, but if you are in the park with your family, it's great to take the time to get that photo opportunity. Cleopatra's Needle. <laughs> Right behind the Met Museum, you will find Cleopatra's Needle, which is an obelisk sent as a gift from Egypt to the United States in the late 1800s. It's one of only a few obelisks outside of Egypt in the entire world. You don't think I got an ancient curse for getting too close, do you? Wash, wash,
Nah. A quick visit, but a must visit for fans of ancient Egyptian history. <laughs> museum Mile. Speaking of the Met, it's just one of a whole slew of museums located along Central Park's Eastern Walkway. I'll be making an entire video dedicated to the Met in the future. You could easily spend days just exploring all the incredible things they have to offer. In addition to the Met, you have <gasps> the Guggenheim, the New Gallery, the Goethe Institute, the Jewish Museum, the National Academy Museum, Cooper Hewitt, Museum of the City of New York, the Museo del Barrio, and the Museum for African Art. Yeah. And that's just on the east side. If you're looking for some AC or to get out of the rain, it's easy to shift your plans from Central Park over to Museum Mile for a great chance to experience our culture and history. Big heads up. Until spring of 2024, the conservatory gardens are undergoing major renovations. I went and just about all of it was presently inaccessible. So please take note before heading in that direction. They are presently open, but there's just about nothing to see. If you're watching this video after spring of 2024, what's the future like? Has AI taken over? What's Kanye doing these days? Have I become the president? Then you should absolutely head in that direction. Here are some photos I found online of when the conservatory gardens are in full force. There are three gardens, the French garden, the Italian garden, Garden and the English Garden. All three are gorgeous in their own way. It's a super popular wedding photo destination. It has endless beautiful flowers and fountains and vines and trellises and it's a really really gorgeous place to visit when it's open. Just a reminder depending on where you fall on the timeline of human history. Yeah. If it is not yet spring of 2024, don't go. Otherwise, yeah, absolutely go. It's one of the best places in Central Park. What is your favorite part of Central Park? Share with me all your secrets, all your nooks, all your crannies, all your hidden gems. I want to know everywhere you love to go down in the comments. Also, please share your Central Park food tips. I wanted to put some delicious food in this video, but honestly, I couldn't find any, so I need your help. I hope this video helped you in some way. If it did, it would mean a lot to me if you would consider subscribing. I love you for watching. My name is Josh. Now let's get lost. Justin!